Hey guys, in my last video I showed you how to um, make a field battery transmit mod and the idea was to uh, increase the length of the battery power on the sender, um, the transmitter from and by swapping it from double AA, the double A rechargeable batteries we all end up using for these things to um, a 12 volt 22 amp power uh, heavy lead acid, solid you know sealed lead acid battery and that that really I thought was pretty handy because you know you can if you want stand in your field and you know play with your radio control stuff it's perfect for my tank. Um, but the one thing I wanted really was a bit more portability while still retaining a bit more um, You know length of battery and a bit more power from the batteries uh, The problem with the AA batteries is they never they, they do produce power, but the milliamp power uh, The milliamp hours that are sent to the transmitter are never really that high anyway So if you just put a bit more through them, you do get a far better range um, so this is how I'm, this is how I'm uh, going to do this one. Um, the sender receive the sender the transmitter has a positive and negative wire coming off the terminals in the in the actual transmitter itself, and they come out down the wires and go into Anderson clips at the end. Right, that's I showed you on that one on the last video. If you've missed that, go have a look at the video. However, on this one, what the idea is, these Andersons from the sender are now going to hook up to a step-up board, and the step-up board is going to hook up to a power bank, which is usually there to power and recharge mobile phones. And the idea is that you've got your battery bank um, with 5 volts going into a step-up board, which is going to boost it to 13.2 13, 13 volts, and then that 13.2 volts is going to connect up through the Andersons here. So we've got the sender all sorted, that's grand. Uh, but now we need to sort out the step up board ready for the power bank. So for this we're going to use a step up PCB board. Uh, this board steps in it up power from uh, 3 volts, 5 volts and sends it to 12 or 36 volts and we're going to hook this up to a battery bank using a USB wire um, on this USB wire I've chopped off the end you can use it from like an old mouse or an old keyboard or whatever and uh, I've chopped off the end and exposed the wires and the positive wire will go onto the PCB board here on the left the negative of the wire will go in the middle and then we need a positive cut to come out of the right uh, screw and a negative to come out of the right screw for the output and for that what we're going to do is I've made two wires uh, one wire which I've put a positive Anderson clip on and I've done the same again with a negative wire so the negative will be going in here in the middle positive will be going here on the right and the USB will be going both on the left with the positive and the negative in the middle there and what we'll do is we'll I'll just screw these wires in now to the board I'll hook this up to a, a power bank the output will then come out through the Andersons here through these Andersons and what I'll do is I'll check what um, powers coming currently out of this board and then depending on the power I'll move this little screw here which will change the output and when it gets to about 13.2 volts then I'll hook it up to the transmitter because I know I won't blow the transmitter and it should just be a nice amount of juice so I'll just screw these in so I've screwed those in um, as you can see here, let me just zoom in a little if I can. Uh, positive on the left, in, negative in the middle, in, and negative in the middle, out. Positive on the right, out. So, Andersons and USB. Now, with a bit of luck, everything will be um, insulated there and I can just hook up a battery bank and I should get the glow of the LED there we go now the LED is showing you that there's power going through it fair played but at the moment I don't know how much power is going through it so what I'll do is I'll take my old um, 
analog multimeter. Um, what we're looking at, slap it to 50 volts, say, so we can get that in. There you go. Uh, positive, positive, negative to negative. Bit of that one. Bit of that. Any, any life? Got anything going on? Any movements? No. There's got to be a better way than this. So, it looks like there's roughly about, let's have a look, drop down there. What's that, 25 you reckon? So 25 volts, and if I press the battery bank on, boom, say... What's that? 42 volts. So what we're looking at 25, 42, um, 25, 42, 15, 17 volts. It's a little bit too much juice. So without fiddling with stuff too much, don't get angry with me. This power button sucks. There we go. So just turn that juice down a bit. Let me go on up. Down, please, down. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. Full whack. I reckon that is sweet. Hmm. So, with juice, it's 10 volt there, so... Got 25 volts, which is a left stick. Two in the middle of that would be um, 35 ish. Drop it down. Yeah, should we hook that puppy up and see if this glows? Let's do this. We have glowage. We have glowing and glowing, but we don't have glowing. We've got glow on the board. But no glowing on the transmitter. So what I'll do is, where's my little screwdriver? There we go. Step that little baby up till she shines. Oops. So success. Um, I've hooked it up, but what I found is that it wouldn't come on there at 12 volts for some reason, or 13 volts. It needed a bit more, but what I did find it a um, bit more juice, so I um, just kept turning it. I will check the voltage in a sec. And what you find is that the more you turn it, of course, the more voltage, the brighter your LED shows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the brightness of the LED with... Um, coming off the lead acid battery because that's that's pretty decent brightness so can I get a better brightness on the video that's the brightness of the LED off the off the um, lead acid so look in the eye yeah that looks alright it's pretty shiny Oops. and then Let's have a look at the same from the battery bank. Yeah, so it's fine the power side of it, um, the step up board stable. Um, this is with the power bank, so you've got quite a bright light. I'd say that's probably brighter than the um, the lead acid, but I can live with that, I'm not going to grumble. Uh, I will check it out on the tank though. But what I just did, I noticed, is uh, I changed the battery bank to a smaller battery bank. And it's not um, usually a problem, but what I would say is that the battery bank I was using, uh, I was using this yesterday, that big one for um, my e-bike, and my screen kept glitching. And uh, I think it's had its day, so I'm going to play around, see if there's any connectors. Open it up, see if there's any dodgy connectors in it, see if you can reuse any cells or whatnot in it. If not, then um, that one can go. I've got a few new ones coming. 
but um, yeah, it works quite nice. Um, uh, battery bank, PCB board, transmitter. Um, the battery bank's are five volt. The transmitter's twelve volt. So whatever the battery bank will last you at five volt, you're pretty much halving if you're using it for the twelve volt. Uh, the efficiency is pretty good with these little um, uh, PCB boards from China now. So really, um, the last thing to do here now is um, to glue gun the wires come in, in and out of the PCB. Uh, that way I can put the little um, the little chips there in a little box or something to stop them being beat about. The idea is this goes in the pocket, this goes in a box and also in the pocket. Uh, the wires lead out of your pocket up to your uh, transmitter and it's the only thing you have to carry. Um, the small battery bank's okay but it's like 2200 milliamps so it's not going to last particularly very long. Uh, if you had a few of them they'd be handy, you could keep swapping them. Or you could get something like this bigger one but make it more reliable. Uh, this has had its day, it's at least a year old and it's done really well but could do with um, uh, waiting for them new ones to come through now they're a bit more reliable. And also I noticed with power banks is some of them have buttons. Um, Look, that one's not even turning on there. Some of them have buttons. Um, they're not very good. Try to get one without a button. Without a button, it's automatically on all the time. It'll, If there's something connected up to it, it'll release juice to it. With a button, if um, it's sometimes the case, if it's not pulling juice, then it turns itself off. It's like it's doing you a favour to conserve energy, but in fact it's actually hindering. Uh, that'd be a pain if um, it goes in saving mode on my bike and then my uh, front screen, my TFT would go down and then my camera at the back would go down as they both connect to the one battery bank. Um, but to glue gun them I can um, I might as well take you over here. This believe it or not is by soldering bay, e.g. it's two stools and a soldering iron. And on my soldering bay I have a few bits that I use quite a, few, uh, a lot so I just leave them there rather than putting them away all the time. Um, a glue gun off eBay for £1.20 which is legend because it's got a really thin nozzle on it so you know you can get uh, small bits of glue into small places. Um, that sounds so wrong. Um, there are some standard wire cutters. On the left that pen there, um, that thing is a flux pen. And I've seen loads of people on YouTube um, soldering without flux and I don't know how the hell you do that because when I try that it fails miserably. Uh, flux is the only way to do it for me. Uh, I love Renault's soldering iron. Mine's the basic small watch soldering iron. Um, but Renault's is massive which is, it's like you could solder a fucking car together with that thing which is awesome. Um, just, you'd use it really well man. Uh, if you do watch this vid, uh, what I was going to say, um, then there's the standard uh, pliers and then you've got some heat shrink and I've got a few other bits around there like a uh, SLA battery charger, um, the old school analog multimeter, uh, a few PCB boards and some hell of a load of wi uh, wiring. All right, if I just glue these in here, I don't have to make them special or anything, I don't have to go out of my way, so, so look. Lullage, blobbage, 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 gluage, gluage, gluage. Perfect, perfect job there. Oh, yeah, look at the professionalism. The professionalism. Black, 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 black. Done. So, there's that glued sorted. Um, oh, da, 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 da. Sticky. So, no, they should be pretty insulated so they're not going to connect to each other while they're in my pocket. Or if I put them in the box, I'll dig one out now and I'll put that in a box to our uh, holes so these wires can both come out the other end, hook them up, and then uh, I've got my, my uh, portable field mod, so to speak. So, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this mod and um, if, uh, if you guys do make any or come up with any improvements, uh, for the transmitter mod, do uh, leave me a feedback and let me know. Uh, be cool. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy. See you later.